This is a demonstration video for Filterstorm 4.5 on iPhone. Uh, I'm going to be editing an image in this photo and going over the interface, but I will not be going into uh, all of the different features of uh, Filterstorm. There will be some more videos and text documentation on the website. So let me start by tapping on the camera icon and hitting photo library to load an image from the photo library. So you can zoom and pan two fingers and swiping with one finger. Um, so these icons from top to bottom are the cameras to load an image. Uh, the cropping icon gives canvas controls that's uh, including cropping and adding borders, scaling, uh, straightening. That brightness contrast icon represents the filters uh, that also has things like black and white, blurring, curves, levels, uh, vignettes, things like that. Well, that's the layers button. I'm not going to be going into layers in this video, but uh, there will be more documentation on that. It's the automations button. Uh, automations are saved edits that can be applied to uh, image. So you can edit one image, save an automation, and then apply that same set of edits to another image. It's the app info icon below that. Um, you can also uh, edit metadata from there. I will not be going into that in this video. And the history icon and export. So right now let's go into the uh, canvas tools. On the bottom here you have some quick buttons to rotate left, right, and to flip. You can also use this button to make it a square uh, for people who want to uh, say uh, add letter pillar boxing for Instagram or something like that. Um, you go to the cropping tool. Um, so by default, this box, the cropping box, will be uh, set to the ratio of the image. Since I made it a square, it's now a square. Um, you can zoom and pan to set uh, what you want to be cropped, which will be whatever whatever is in that box. And you can change the ratio by dragging these lines or by choosing a preset ratio 5 by 4, 3 by 4, things like that. And you just hit this check button to apply it. Now I didn't really want to do that, so I'm going to go to the history here uh, and go back to where it was opened. And see, it reverts to the original. Now, on these uh, menus, you'll always see these little triangle buttons up top, and they'll bring you back to the previous uh, previous menu. With more options in here, like straightening. You get a slider to straighten. Cancel that. And borders, you can set the size of the border. You can give it text. And you can change the border color, make it black, for example, make the text white. Um, to add it, you tap that add border button down on the bottom, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to cancel that and go back. Now let's get into the filters. So um, you have things like brightness, contrast, curves, levels. Shadows, highlights, saturation, black and white, blurring, vignettes. Uh, I'm going to start by showing the brightness contrast. Actually, let me go back. Um, we also have on the bottom here a switch to make, put the controls on the right hand side. I'm going to do that just to make this interface uh, or this demo a little easier. Normally, I use my thumb on the controls with my left hand, but I'm not doing that for this. So keep the controls on the right here. Uh, now I'll go into the brightness contrast. So you s can see these these buttons here, this contrast that makes the slider brightness. Um, and you can slide and you get a preview. So this button will set where the uh, preview shows. I believe it defaults to the right hand side like this. 
and you can tap it again to put it on the left hand side and tap again to make the whole image the preview. So a lot of uh, the filters will work this way. You have um, a slider with maybe a couple options and then a cancel button up here, uh, the apply to mask button which I'll go over in a little bit here and the check button applies it to the image. Also have some settings here. You can set the blend mode. Um, that's not particularly useful for the brightness contrast, um, but is useful for something like blurring. Uh, I'm going to cancel this right now and just uh, let's see. Go to hue saturation just to give an example. See, it looks the, about the same. You can black and white to saturated. You can also change the balance of uh, from the red cyan, etc. I'm also going to cancel that. And now I'm going to do some actual editing by going into the curves. This is a more advanced tool. Um, there's also a levels tool if you're more comfortable with levels. Uh, but the way curves work is that when you have this graph here you're editing, um, so the x-axis from dark on the left to bright on the right is uh, the input uh, pixels of the image. So all the dark pixels are represented down here and the bright ones up here. And on the y-axis is the output um, from dark on the bottom to bright on the top. So if I pull the curves up, uh, it gets brighter because everything that was uh, dark got pulled up to a brighter image and everything that was bright also got pulled up to be uh, to be brighter. If I pull it down it gets darker. Now where curves get interesting is when you use more points. So I can tap this add point button here and then tap again to set a second point. So if I make this sort of shape you can see the contrast dies and the reason for that is these the dark pixels over here are getting brighter because I've pulled them up and the bright pixels up here are getting darker because I've pulled it down. So you get this kind of muddy contrastless look. But if I do the opposite, and I pull the darks down and the brights up, it gets really contrasty. The, made the darks darker and the brights brighter. Um, so what I'm going to do now, let's set this over to preview on the left side. So I'm going to set the curves uh, so that the sky is nice and contrasty. Um, that's not bad, that looks pretty nice. Uh, maybe make it a little brighter here. Okay, let's put this on the whole image. Now I could hit the check button there and apply this to the image, but then I'd lose all the detail in these buildings and I don't want to do that. And the water looks pretty bad too. But I do like the sky like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the masking tools by pressing this mask brush icon button here. And they allow me to, uh, to selectively edit the image, only parts. So I'm only going to edit the sky. Now there are uh, a bunch of tools here. You can see there's a lot of icons. Um, and I could do this edit several different ways. Um, I'll just go quickly over the tools right now and then I'll use one of them to make the edit. So first we have the brush tool, well, first we have the, this, uh, the cancel icon and the pen zoom tool. And this just lets me uh, position the image without fear of uh, accidentally changing the image. Then we have this brush icon. And, uh, so now I can use my finger to simply brush on the change like this. Uh, the brush scales when I zoom, so if I zoom out it will be bigger, if I zoom in it gets it's tinier. Uh, but it's the same size relative to my finger. Below that we have eraser icon. That uh, works the same way as the brush, except it obviously erases the changes. So use that to correct your mistakes. Uh, then I have the uh, gradient tool. So let me move this over a little and go to the gradient tool. So you see it has these two points, the, um, and they determine uh, how the gradient 
is applied. I can use two fingers on them if I want. So see if I put it like this, we'll get the left half applied and this little fading into where on the right half the mask uh, is not applied. And there's a bunch of different shapes here. Got a circle, uh, the inverse of a circle where the outside's applied, kind of like a vignette. And two more linear ones, one where the, it's applied on the outside when not in the inside, and the opposite where it's applied on a line. Just going to cancel that for now. Below the gradient, I have a color range tool. So what this does is it takes the color of the point underneath the, uh, the loop here, and it applies the mask to similar colors. And I can set the range of uh, the tolerance of that, and it'll apply based on the colors showing. I'm going to cancel that too. Below that, we have uh, an opacity slider. This just simply uh, adds the mask evenly across the image. Then we have our vignette tool. So this uh, gives a vignette shape. You can be a, a circ circular vignette or scale to the uh, to the image. You can use this for something like blurring the outsides of an image. You go to the blur tool um, and then use this vignette and you'll apply it only to the outsides. And this button below is invert tool. So right now, since the mask is empty, when I hit the invert tool, it makes it completely filled. But if I have something drawn in, and I hit the invert tool, then you can see it gets reversed like that. Um, so what I'll just do is I'll use a gradient. It's very easy to just, oops, one, just a linear gradient to just apply it with a nice fading effect. Very smooth, looks natural. And I'll apply it like that. Now I can go to the curves again and do the same thing, but this time I'm looking at the water. So I can set the contrast specifically the way I want it for the water. The water is already fairly dark, so I don't really want to darken it, but I can still make that S shape there to uh, increase the contrast. I'll go to mask. And this time to be different, I'll just use a brush and do it like that. Oops. Now I'm going to go one more time. This time I'm just going to Pull the curves up. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just I just want to make the buildings uh, brighter, so you can actually see some of the uh, some of the detail in the buildings. I'm going to go to the mask again. And I'll again use a brush. I'll zoom in nice and big this time now. Uh, pull down the opacity so that. Uh, fortunately, at the angle I'm looking at this, it's a bit hard to see what I'm doing. Uh, I think I overshot. A bit here. Then you can zoom in really big so you can get really fine control. But this is just a demonstration, so that's fine. Uh, yeah. So I can go ahead and apply that. And that looks much nicer than the original image. 
Um, so if I want to save this, I'll just uh, go here, the export button. Um, and I'm just going to tap on photo library. You see it gets a check. Uh, there are settings here, but I'll have another video for uh, all the different export options.